Hi, uh, my name is Laura Gitlin, and I'm your new dean of the College of Nursing and Health Professions at Drexel University. I haven't had a chance yet to meet you all personally, and we're looking for all different kinds of opportunities to do so. But to begin with, we just wanted to provide you with an introductory little video chat, if you will, uh, so I could introduce myself. Uh, so I started here February 1, so I've been here two and a half months. You may have seen an email where uh, in April I was in Chile. I do a lot of work in Chile and I'm looking for opportunities for all of us, for faculty and students and staff to have exchanges in that country. But I'm back here uh, and uh, very excited to be working. Uh, with everybody and the first I'd say three four months I call my discovery period where I'm really trying to get to know everybody and understand the programs uh, understand the needs of, of uh, you as, as students uh, and to that end we invited uh, everybody uh, to participate in a survey and so I thought I would use this first uh, video chat to share with you uh, the questions we asked and some of the responses we got. So we got about 40 sub-responses and we thank everybody who participated. Uh, so I, we know that this doesn't represent all of the close to 5,000 students that we have, uh, but I thought you'd find some of the responses interesting and it would also give me an opportunity to talk to you a little bit about some of my ideas as to how to solve some of the challenges that uh, we're experiencing. So that's what I'm going to do today in the video chat. So the first question we asked is, how can we support your educational journey while making sure that you stay on track and graduate on time? And of course, graduating on time is really, really important. And there were several themes that emerged. Uh, one, and I'd like to uh, briefly address each of them. One were a number of issues that were raised with academic advising. And you may have noticed from uh, emails that have been sent out uh, from myself that summarizes a, um, almost a bi-weekly uh, meetings of what I've developed as a newly formed group called the Strategic Dean's Academic Advisors uh, that summarizes the work that we're doing on your behalf. And uh, you're going to see in the next couple of uh, meetings that we have in the reports from those meetings that we will be summarizing some of our deliberations about academic advising. We know we have to do a better job in this respect. And one area that we're tackling immediately is space. So we want to make sure that you have space with your academic advisors where you feel and have privacy uh, and uh, quiet areas. So we're engaging in a very deep um, space study right now and we're going uh, each floor, we're examining each floor and the use of the space. Uh, and uh, to that end I should say that we really want to create better space on the six and eight floors in particular for students, for all of you, uh, but we're also trying to in that regard also tackle uh, academic advising. The other area that was raised uh, and is very critical uh, concern has to do with financial assistance. Uh, and I want to say that I'm very pleased uh, that Laura Furman, who is the Director of Operations and Assessment, I'm very excited that she's agreed to take on the responsibility of overseeing our endowments for students. Uh, and we do have endowments. This is going to be an area that I plan to spend a lot of attention to growing so we can offer scholarships and different supports to to students. So Laura has just begun in this capacity and she's reviewing uh, the endowments that we do have. Most of them are pretty specific to each of to different uh, programs and, and departments uh, and she will be the point person for uh, getting uh, financial assistance in different ways uh, over and above the financial aid office at Drexel University. So that's an area that we're making some progress and I can tell you that we'll be doing some fundraising in that area. Another concern raised had to do, and I'm looking at my paper here of all the responses, had to do 
uh, with uh, clinical placements. Uh, and this is, of course, again, very important because it's an important part of your education. Uh, and the clinical requirements, of course, differ by the department that you're in. And we're taking a very deep dive in terms of understanding the kinds of rotations that students need. And we are about to form an interprofessional committee to in determine and identify uh, alternative and non-traditional uh, placements. Some of you do have placements in prisons, for example, and we have some interesting opportunities to expand that. We also have many community groups that have reached out to us, such as senior centers and adult day services and long-term care programs in which uh, we do not have clinical affiliations yet, and they're really seeking opportunities to collaborate. So I'm very excited that I think in the next year uh, we're going to see some new uh, opportunities uh, in the clinical uh, affiliation. Uh, related to that is that we are always looking for opportunities for new clinical, uh, for uh, student exposures to all different kinds of uh, community centers and opportunities to meet and work with all different kinds of populations. So uh, stay tuned for that one. Uh, another concern, and this was raised by some of our doctoral students, had to do with the Institutional Review Board. And I can tell you that myself and all the faculty definitely feel your pain. Uh, by the way, the issues with the Institutional Review Board is not unique to Drexel. Uh, you may know that I came to Drexel in February, leaving um, a faculty appointment and a directorship of a center at Johns Hopkins University. And so some of the new requirements uh, that are really federally mandated is a pain that we all uh, share. Now, I do know that there are specific concerns with the Institutional Review Board here. Uh, and that it's short-staffed, and it is changing in terms of the forms that are needed and so forth. But I can assure you this is not directed specifically to doctoral students, but affects our entire research community. Unfortunately, as a doctoral student, because doctoral students are short on time and must get their uh, approvals uh, sooner, perhaps, than maybe faculty might have, uh, this becomes problematic. I have been in contact with the Institutional Review Board and we will be setting up a series of meetings to discuss and bring them here as a matter of fact to discuss the new forms that they have and so forth. So uh, stay tuned in that regard. Also in relationship to doctoral students, we're going to be evaluating opportunities for research apprenticeships and different kinds of mentorship opportunities. And this will also extend to our undergraduate and other graduate students in terms of offering opportunities for uh, more in-depth uh, exposure to how do you develop a uh, curriculum vita, a resume, how do you interview, and, and so forth. So I think that uh, we're definitely uh, working on these issues and, and trying to stay on top of them. I want to move on now to another question that we posed. How can we further enrich your educational experience with Blackboard and other online technology tools. Uh, and here I would say that we had very positive comments from students about that experience. Uh, and so I thank you for that. And, and that's really important to know. This is an area that Drexel and in and specifically the College of Nursing and Health Professions really exceeds. As a matter of fact, uh, the College of Nursing and Health Professions is held up as the standard for the entire university. And we've been asked and we have faculty working on university-wide uh, committees to share the quality uh, uh, programs and requirements that we have in place. For example, we are the only college that insists that our faculty take a course in how to use the technologies and online platforms, where that's not the case in other colleges, and the university is considering how we can share uh, our preparation of our faculty in that regard. Uh, but also, I want to let you know that this is an area that we is always fast moving. 
technology is changing, uh, always improving, as, as you know. And so we are always uh, very uh, much uh, on top of and wanting to be on top of how we can improve in, in every area. I just came, as a matter of fact, from a faculty meeting where this was the very topic of discussion. Uh, another, uh, another question, uh, or I should say another area that was uh, discussed, uh, had to do with uh, students asking for uh, more opportunities for networking. Uh, and I do have a meeting lined up in the future, so our next video chat I can give you the, uh, the results uh, with uh, the student uh, life program here at the university. Uh, but we also want to do more things here. For example, we are going to develop what we call an age well collaboratory. And a collaboratory is a center without walls. And this is going to be an initiative to help infuse the curriculum with uh, more age-related uh, content given the uh, global changes in our uh, population with a trend, of course, towards uh, people living longer lives, which is always a great news and a great opportunity for us, as well as serve as a center for our research uh, and uh, also to help infuse our clinical practices with evidence. So we really want to provide opportunities for students to get to know uh, the age-friendly community, which is a very strong initiative in the city and has opportunities for students to be uh, to volunteer and so forth. Uh, and we want to do some uh, fun things by having like movie night where we look at movies related to how older adults are portrayed and we have some really good discussions around that. Uh, so again, uh, we'll be inviting you to that. Uh, another question had to do with let me just turn the page here. Uh, what types of Drexel sponsored events or workshops would you like to participate in the University City campus? And a wide range of suggestions uh, were made. Uh, and as I said, uh, we're going to be increasing uh, opportunities here in the camp on the Center City campus uh, for interprofessional activity and exchanges. Uh, we would like to have some uh, unique uh, challenges uh, where uh, students are, you know, you are paired up in interprofessional kinds of teams to solve big health problems and so forth. Uh, so we have a lot of ideas, and we really want to hear from you as to what your ideas are as to how to enrich our uh, everyday education and student life right here at 3 Parkway. Uh, and you can uh, contact me at any time with your ideas or suggestions. Uh, and I welcome even course corrections here. Uh, and you can contact me at cnhpdean at drexel.edu. So I hope you found this uh, informative and somewhat helpful, and I thank you for the opportunity to allow my uh, to allow me to introduce myself briefly, uh, and I'll see you again in another video chat. Ciao.